<laughs> the carriage is in the way. Hey YouTube, what's going on? I'm Greg. Welcome back to my machine shop. Last time we made really good progress on our crankcase and our sump. We produced the camshaft hole, made it perpendicular to the front surface and parallel to the sides, and we also placed a reference pin the correct distance from our camshaft hole and parallel to it. But before we get started, I'd like to shout out to my newest Patreon, Jerry. How you doing, Jerry? Great to have you on board. If you're interested in supporting what I do here at the channel, I put a link below to my Patreon. So there's two things I'd like to cover today. The first is completing the bore for the crankshaft through our crankcase and sump. The second thing I'd like to do is review the drawings for those building the engine, putting particular emphasis on the difference between the set of drawings for manual machining and CNC machining. If you're not interested in delving into the plans and want to see how we machine the crankshaft bore, I put chapter markers below where you can click and just jump ahead. Okay, let's take a quick look at the plans. Today we're going to machine this crankshaft bore all the way through the crankcase and the sump. It's an inch and a quarter in diameter. Then when we're done, there's an additional feature here, 1.8 inches, 3 sixteenths deep and this appears on both ends. So let's start with this bore, 1.25 inches. I'm going to screw the sump onto the crankcase. Put this pin in here. This will be used as a reference in the lathe. Once I get that determined, I'll pull this out and then bore the hole. This right here is 10 thousandths thick Teflon that I'll be using for my gasket material. I'll tighten these down. I loaded the crankcase assembly into the lathe using the four jaw chuck and I centered the workpiece on our crankcase pin. But then I got to thinking the pin is very short and all it really tells me is that the front of the crankcase bore is in the proper place. But it doesn't tell me that the crankcase bore is going to be truly collinear with the axis of the lathe. I need a longer pin, one at least as long as the crankcase assembly here. So instead of the pin, I found a piece of quarter inch drill rod, and it turns out that the crankcase assembly, when seated against the, the jaws and the four jaw chuck, was well aligned with the lathe center. So I centered the bore axis and then loaded the first in a series of increasingly larger drill bits to rough out the bore. Then proceeded to whack the workpiece against the carriage. Notice this drill bit wander. You can see it's no longer aligned with the lathe center. So we reinsert the drill rod and seat the workpiece against the jaws of the four jaw chuck and recenter, and then we try again. So roughing out the hole and then boring it to size is routine now because we did the same thing with our camshaft hole. There's a very large stick out on this boring bar, so it's going to be very important to make a lot of spring passes. I'd say maybe five once we reach proper dimension. A spring pass is when you don't advance the cross slide and you continue making the same cut over and over and over until eventually the spring is out of the boring bar and you're no longer removing material from the bore. The crankshaft bore is a little bit more forgiving than say the cylinder sleeve bore. If the crankshaft bore is a few thousandths larger on one end than the other, it'll be okay because our bearing holders are made to fit each end of the bore. And even if one side of the bore is larger than the other, they still will be perfectly concentric. The cylinder sleeve, however, we want a very accurate inside diameter throughout. So we'll talk about that later. Now it's time to cut the recess for the lip of the bearing holder. We rough out most of the material first. Then 
Then we make a final finishing cut where we set the cross side to the proper diameter, in this case 1.8 inches, proceed in the proper depth, and then use the cross side to make our cut to the center, all in one continuous path. We knock the burrs off with the file and then create the chamfer on the inside of the crankshaft bore. So that completes the crankshaft bore and the recess for the front crankshaft bearing holder. Now we have to flip the assembly around and create the recess for the rear crankshaft bearing holder. Again, we use the test indicator and touch off on the inside of the crankshaft bore, iteratively adjusting the jaws and the four jaw chuck, centering the bore on the lathe's axis. Once this is done, creating the relief for the rear crankshaft bearing holder is straightforward. It's just a repeat of the operation on the front side. And that completes the machining of the camshaft and crankshaft bores. Those were some tricky operations and you should feel good about getting to this point. I'm not going to say it's downhill from here, but I think the most difficult part is behind us on the crankcase assembly. Don't disassemble the sump in the crankcase just yet. Let's make our crankshaft bearing holders first. I don't want to disrupt the perfect bore alignment we have right now. I thought that went really well. I think we're making great progress on our crankcase assembly. Before we go, I wanted to talk a little bit about the drawing packages that are available and talk about the differences between the CNC machining package and the manual machining package. What I have up on the screen right here is the download page from my website. And you notice there are two Wallaby crankcase sub-assemblies. One of them targeted for CNC machining, one of them targeted for manual machining. Download the one that is most suitable for you. You can look at the other one for reference if you'd like. What I'd like to do is open up the assembly drawing for both of them and review them real quickly. So this is the crankcase sub-assembly drawing, and you'll notice it's the Dash 1 version. This is the version that's intended for using a CNC router or CNC machine. This is the same crankcase sub-assembly, only it's the Dash 2 configuration, and it's intended for manual machining. Really, the only differences are cosmetic. The one for manual machining has flatter sides and is missing some of the finer details on the block cover. There's three parts difference. The block cover, the crankcase, and the sump. You can see that on the CNC version, this is curved, and on the sump it's curved, and that there's fins on the block cover. Whereas on the crankcase subassembly intended for manual machining, the sides are flat and much easier to machine on a mill. And the block cover is missing some of the finer details. I also wanted to show you inside the CNC crankcase and sump zip file. In addition to the PDF drawings, there's also three IGIS files, one for the block, one for the crankcase, and one for the sump. These are used in our CAM program in creating the tool paths for our CNC machine. Well, I thought we made great progress today on our crankcase. Next time, I think we'll work on the bearing holders while we have our crankcase together. So, I'm Greg. Thanks for visiting me in my workshop. Until next time, take care.